I'm going to erase all of the lines that I don't need. So all of the mapping out lines from part one, I'm just going to erase those. It doesn't have to be perfect in our final project. So that's pretty good. So the next thing I'm going to do is what I like to call toning my paper. So depending on the skin tone of the person that you're drawing, you might tone really light um, or you might tone a bit darker. So for her, since she's pretty fair, I'm just going to use the side of my pencil and give a light value to everything. And what I'm doing is giving her skin, if you will. Particularly when you're drawing on white paper, I find that it saves me a lot of time later if I just shade a little bit before. Don't forget to shade her neck too. and her hair as well. It doesn't have to be totally smooth. Um, if you're using a softer pencil, like a 2B, 4B, or 6B, it'll be easier. But if you're just using a regular pencil, um, just make sure that you're using the side of it and it should be, should be okay. All right, so now that I have an even tone over everything, I want to ask myself, what are the darkest areas uh, that I see? And the darkest areas that I see are those shatter shapes are in here. And I also see them down here, which I had marked earlier. So I'm going to start by shading that. So I'm just using the side of my pencil and I'm going to mark in those shadow shapes coming up and out. Okay, that one. And down to the side of her nose, folding around here. So we'll start shading. Even if something's a really dark value, it's always better to start lighter and then build it up by adding more pressure wherever it gets a little darker. I'm going to erase this so I can see what I'm doing. Down here. And I like to say that when you're drawing something, you don't just draw it once. <laughs> You're drawing it over and over again so every time you're working on a particular area asking yourself is this right does this need to be changed um, always striving for accuracy okay. now I'm gonna mark this bottom section of her nose which we had marked in that shape earlier again using the side of my pencil I'm not shading like this I'm just shading going up and down smoothly And then I'm also going to shade a little bit to the other side of her nose, since I know that the nose is a pyramid, so if the light is hitting the top of her nose, the sides are going to be a little bit darker. So I'm just going to shade really lightly over here. Really, really lightly. Then I'm also going to shade this under part a little bit. and then I'm going to shade in her nostril. So not applying a lot of pressure, noticing that the nostril is not just a black hole, that it's a little bit darker in the crease, but then it's lighter here towards the bottom. And then I'm gonna shade the bottom of the nostril a bit. Okay, so like that. Make it a little funny. All right, now I'm gonna move on to the lips. So I'm going to 
go back in and shade that crease. darkening it just a little bit again refining that shape and then I'm going to shade her upper lip so remember we'll get a much more natural lip if we just shade it and not draw it in and you want to notice that the right side of, of her lip is darker than the left side of her lip, so I'm gonna I'm gonna do that by just adding a little bit more pressure on that side, and then I'm gonna go back in and darken that crease a little bit more. Okay. Now for her bottom lip, I see darkness here, but there's a really actually quite a bit of light here, so I'm just gonna start by shading, following the contour, following the shape, the roundness of the bottom lip. I'm gonna start making marks going up 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 and maybe just carrying over a little bit to the other side but not too much then if I'm looking at her face I can also see that there's some shading here below her lips so kind of looking at this shape right in here. Oop. Really lightly shading to either side. Okay. And then I notice that there's also shadow here um, on her jawline. So I'm putting my pencil at the jawline and then flicking it up. Oh, that's great. Okay. So now let's go ahead and move on to her eyes, the part that everyone loves to shade. Uh, so let's start with this eye because there's more darkness. So we already, I'm going to zoom in a bit here. We already um, shaded this area in here. And so I'm going to start by breaking down the actual eye itself. So we have the iris, the colored part, pretty dark. Then we have that pupil in the center. And then I'm going to mark out the highlight shape here on the side so that I don't accidentally shade it too much. So I'm going to start by darkening the outside of her iris, because that's pretty dark. And then the inside of her iris is a little lighter, so I'm going to make lines radiating out from the pupil. Right. Pretty good. Then I'm going to go ahead and shade in the tear duct, noticing that it's a little darker in the crease, and then the main part of it is a little bit lighter. Then I'm going to darken the lash line a bit, just literally going over and darkening it, shading it a bit. And I'm just going to shade a little bit under her eye too. I see that there's some darkness there. Come on in and going down. And if you're wondering to yourself, Miss O, how do you see all these things? I don't see them. You will see them after you've done enough portraits and you just start to know that they're there. I don't know how else to explain it, but it'll just come to you. Um, and then I'm going to darken her eyelid a bit using the side of my pencil so that it's not super harsh. 
And then I notice that this part of the eyelid is darker. So I'm going to shade that a little more and have the inner part be a little lighter. Darken this a bit more. And noticing that this part of her eye is also darker. So I'm going to make lines gently coming up to show that shading. Now her eyelashes are not super pronounced, but I can see them a little bit coming up straight, so I'm going to put my pencil at the lash line and then really gently make marks going up. And at the end, I almost don't see them because there's so much darkness here, just like that. Now a lot of you asked about the eyebrows, so let's go ahead and address that today. Um, once I have everything shaded around the eye, then if the eyebrow is dark, I like to shade a little bit more wherever the darkest part of the eyebrow is. And then making lots of strokes, gentle strokes, following the direction of the hair, so her hair is going in this direction, I'm just going to layer really gently. The softer you do this, just like with the eyelashes, the more realistic it's going to be. I'm layering strokes on top of one another. And over here, they're so light you almost can't see them. So I'm just going to do a few. And just layer, 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 uh, until feel you've matched your value. Looks pretty good. What you don't want to do is this. You don't want to do that type of layering. You want to make them really light. Okay. Now let's zoom out for a bit. So for the sake of time, you would complete this process for the other eye too. So you'd be looking for the lights and for the shadows, and then you would mark them in. I'm sorry, you would look for the shadows and you would mark them in. So now we're going to talk about how you carve out the lights. So I'm going to take my eraser here, and any area that I see that is light, I'm just going to carve it out. So I'm going to start with this area up here. Right? That's all light. I'm going to take my eraser down the side of her face. I know it's a little hard to see because everything looks really bright, um, but she's starting to look a lot more three-dimensional. I'm going to come here by her eye. I am also going to erase that. I'm also going to erase the bridge of her nose a little where the light is coming and a little bit on the nostril. And I'm also going to erase this lower part here and also a little bit on the round part of her chin. I wonder if I can close my window a little bit. Maybe, hmm, I don't know if that makes a difference. Hmm. I guess not, but you'll have to take my word for it. So the idea is that we're adding the shadows, but then we're subtracting the highlight. I think I made that worse. Okay. Um, and for the hair, you're just going to follow the same thing that we did in the video. So you'll mark your sections. So for example, here, this is a dark section. And then we have a light section here. So for the dark section, I'm going to start by making lots of long, fluid lines next to one another, building those up until they're the value that I want. And over here, making lines going up and down, 
until I get the value that I want. Hopefully this gives you a little bit of an understanding of how to approach the shading. So remember the first thing you want to do is tone, the second thing you want to do is add the shadows, and the last thing you want to